Possible breakthrough to force standards in the baby food industry. More than two years ago, Spotlight on America exposed heavy toxic metals in baby food and the FDA's failure to address the problem. Now, as Lisa Fletcher reports, one state making or taking matters, that is, into their own hands. The news shocked parents around the country. The baby foods they depended on to nourish their infants dangerously contaminated. It felt uncomfortable to know that brands that we trust that are in the store aren't so trustworthy after all. Known health hazards like lead, arsenic, and cadmium in the very jars given to our most vulnerable triggered a congressional investigation and countless headlines after leading scientists sounded the alarm. Ellipse Analytics CEO Sean Callen, who first blew the whistle six years ago, recently shared his lab's latest baby food test results with Spotlight on America. More than 300 baby food products were analyzed and compared to the same foods tested in 2017. Between 2017 and 2023, the proportion of the category that we are able to detect heavy metals remains the same. Basically, the same percentage of baby foods contaminated in 2017 are still contaminated today. Roughly 20% have what Callan says would be considered high levels of lead. But it's not all bad news. Callan says tests show a good portion of manufacturers have made modest improvements. The worst products are still just about as bad as they were before, but everybody else seems to be trending in the right direction. And it'll be really exciting to see how this new law impacts that. That would be California Assembly Bill 899, unanimously passed and signed by Governor Newsom just days ago. It is the first major law to set strict standards for baby foods. California Assembly member Al Murasuchi is the architect of the bill. Leading scientists have been trying to make changes to the industry, health organizations, members of Congress, and nobody's been able to get it done. Are you the guy who's going to get this done? Well, you know, I'm hoping that uh, uh, not only myself, uh, but uh, the state of California. You know, uh, California often leads the, co the country uh, in terms of fighting for consumer protections. Starting in January, baby food makers will be required to test a representative sample of their products for toxic elements once a month, and by 2025, disclose those results. I think it goes to show that when things don't happen in Washington, D.C., states can continue to act, and California is doing so, but there's no absence for the need for federal action. Something U.S. Representative Raja Krishnamoorthy has been pushing for since 2021 when he led a subcommittee investigation that exposed stunning problems in the baby food industry and anemic action by the FDA. We have to make sure that at the federal level we do what it takes to provide uniform standards throughout the country. Krishnamoorthy will reintroduce the Baby Food Safety Act, which would set maximum levels for heavy metals and require companies to test their final products for total levels of contaminants and disclose those test results. It would also give the FDA authority under the law to recall products that don't meet standards. It's good to have legislation in place so that whether it's a Democratic or Republican administration, they're following what the American people want, which is they, they want food for their kids that is free of toxins. For Spotlight on America, I'm Lisa Fletcher. Thanks, Lisa. Now, Spotlight on America reached out to three major baby food manufacturers to ask how they plan to implement the testing provisions for that new California law. Gerber says that it intends to fully comply and is focused on transparency and accountability. You can see their full statement at spotlightinvestigates.com. Now, Plum and Beach, they did not respond to our request for comment.